So the price is one of the major things that parents are going to ask about at the parent meeting. And this is your price quote here. And I can understand if it looks a little confusing to you, I can promise that the first times I looked at price quotes, I was just at a loss. It's, it can be complicated, so I'm gonna run through all of the elements of the price quote for you just to make sure that you understand it. So if at any point you've got questions about this, please let me know because it's very important that you understand this. The first and most important element of the price quote is your program fee. And you'll see that listed there at the top under price quote. And that includes your round trip airfare to your destination, your hotel stays for each night of the tour, your meals, whether it be continental breakfast and dinner, or some tours include lunches, some tours include less meals, for example, Australia. Um, and then also the services of your bus or coach or train or internal flights, however you're gonna be moving around to different destinations. And then finally, the services of your tour directors and local guides. Also included in there is your estimated departure fees. These are subject to change. They're set by the airlines and the FAA. And so we just estimate these right now because they do have a tendency to change and we don't wanna charge you one price and then have to come back to you for money later. Um, so we will issue, we'll let you know what the final departure fees are 50 days prior to the tour leaving. There's also an enrollment fee of, one, of $95 a weekend supplement for some of our tours. So for example, if your group is leaving on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or returning on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, those flights are typically more expensive and we'll assess a $35 fee for that. There is also an adult supplement, and we consider adults anyone who is 23 or older by the final day of the tour. Uh, the reason that we do that is that adults will be roomed in double rooms instead of the triple and quadruple rooms that students will be roomed in. So those rooms, number one, are more expensive. And also, all of the destinations um, and itinerary stops that we have on our tours, we've negotiated student pricing. And so typically in Europe, anyone who is 23 or older will no longer be considered a student and will have to pay a higher entrance fee. There are also optional excursions on many of the tours, and those range anywhere from uh, whitewater rafting in Costa Rica to a trip up to the top of Mount Pilatus in Lucerne. And finally, there is also insurance. This, uh, I will go into more detail on a future slide. And one thing that is not included in your price quote that is very important to take into account is tipping. The tour directors, local guides, and bus drivers work a lot like um, like waiters and waitresses in the US do. They earn the majority of their income from tips. And what we suggest per day is $6 per person per day for the tour director and $3 per person per day for the bus driver. So that price quote may have seemed a little, oh, sorry. Yes. That was a little overwhelming to me, Ted. I'm sorry, I'm so well, new with this. Let I me just return to that slide. Yeah, go ahead, Sandy. I, I'm not. I'm so nervous because I'm going to have a recruitment meeting soon and I just, I, I'm so confused. I don't understand. My tour consultant said that if I have people sign up that I'm going to lock in a price, the entire price, but now you're telling me departure fees are not going to lock in. I'm so, what do you mean? Like, you'll be locking in. It's going to change. I, I don't know how to explain that. You'll be locking in the program fees, but the departure, the departure fees, as I said, are subject to change. However, your group won't be paying for those all along. We've negotiated it so that you won't pay those until 50 days before the group departs, just so that we do get a final price with those. Um, and there is a possibility for those departure fees to actually go down, especially with how fuel prices have been dropping of late. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess I'm just concerned, like what if they go up so much that they can't afford to pay them 50 days before, then what? Um, with that, well, I'll go into the payment plan in detail a bit later, um, but they will be paying month by month, and that makes actually paying for the tour quite easy, um, and they won't be paying lump sums at any given time. Does that help out? I think, yeah, no, that makes more sense. Okay, great. Well, let me go into that payment plan right now. Um, and as you brought up, Sandy, that the price code is a little bit complicated, but I can promise that our payment plan is hassle-free. It is incredibly easy. And we call it our auto pay plan, and you'll see why. So each participant will pay $95 when they enroll for the tour, that's their enrollment fee, but it is free to enroll in the auto pay program itself. 
Then from there, they'll pay you monthly deductions from either a credit card, debit card, or a bank account, a checking account rather. Um, and those will be withdrawn on the last Wednesday of each month. So this will put the final payment deadline to about 35 days prior to departure, depending on when that last Wednesday of the month falls. And with this, uh, with this payment plan, there are no late fees, which is fantastic. There, it's, it's impossible physically um, to fall behind on your payments. So for example, um, you can see at the bottom, if a group starts paying 18 months in advance for a tour that the total price is $2,900, We'll divide that by 17 months. Keep in mind the final payment deadline will be around 35 days prior to departure, so subtract that one month. That comes out to just $170 per month. So Sandy, you were a bit worried about departure fees, but if you look at it this way, does that price seem a lot more manageable? Oh yeah, that's awesome. Great, great. Well, as Sukari mentioned earlier, safety and security is our number one priority. And one element that plays into that safety and security that we're able to offer is our insurance program. We call it our all-inclusive insurance, and we're really proud of it. We work exclusively with Effecta Insurance, which, like EF, is a Swedish company, and they've got a great presence in Europe, um, and a great presence all throughout Europe, that is. And there are a couple of things that play into the all-inclusive insurance. First and foremost, there's medical and accident insurance, um, and that covers up to 30, 30 excuse me, $30,000 per incident that happens on tour. Great thing about this is that you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. If you've used health insurance in the States, typically you'll have to pay some sort of a co-pay, a co-insurance fee or something like that. Um, but there's no out of pocket with this, which is great and hassle-free on tour. It is free for group leaders. Um, but I just want to stop and tell a quick story about the insurance, um, just in case you're a bit skeptical about it. Especially when you're traveling with a group of 40, um, even smaller groups, and traveling long periods of time in Europe, it's very common to run into um, to road bumps and roadblocks and things like that, and not at all uncommon for, for any small mishap such as an injury or a hospitalization or just, just general sickness to happen. Um, so for example, last year we had a group traveling in Ireland and they were about ready to make their transfer to Galway for their next stop on their itinerary. But one of, the, uh, one of the students on the tour was having some stomach pains. They took him to the hospital, the tour director was able to get him there, and at the hospital they found out that he needed to have his appendix removed. Now, it seems like fairly minor surgery, but with the recovery time there was no way that student was going to be able to make that transfer up to Galway. So what we did was that $30,000 insurance covered for both parents to fly over and stay with their son while the rest of the group moved on. Another part of the, uh, of the all-inclusive insurance is the baggage and property damage. Who here has traveled before and had the airlines either lose a bag or have it delayed in transit? Exactly. It's incredibly common, and especially when you're traveling with groups, uh, it's bound to happen to someone, and this will cover that. There is also tour cancellation and interruption insurance, which is fairly self-explanatory, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. And we also have, through Effecta Insurance, a 24-hour emergency assistance line. They are bilingual operators and are more than happy to help out with any questions. Any questions about the insurance at this point? Great. So the goal of your recruitment process was to get students to enroll. And they can do that in four different ways. The easiest is absolutely to do it through the website. We've got a great website and the students can enroll there. That's why I suggested earlier that you have a computer at your recruitment meeting. If you can hold it in a computer lab or a library, as I said, that would be great. They can also enroll by mail. Um, they can, if you'll have application booklets, the students and parents can fill those out with credit card or um, checking account routing numbers and mail those into EF. Or if you've got one of the face-to-face -face reps at the meeting, we can take them back to the Boston or Denver office for you. Finally, they can enroll by phone or by fax. So now that you've gone through the whole recruitment process, you've had your meetings, you've chosen who to invite on the tour, you've chosen your tour, and you've gotten your students enrolled, I'm going to give you some tips that have come from tour consultants in the office. These are some of our most common tips, and they'll really help you out for your tour. 